Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers from whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. Yo, what's going on? I am Scoops Bronson. And I am S. Foster. And that's right. You tune into another episode of the Viewers Anonymous podcast where we give you our very own reviews and takes of movies and TV straight out of Hollywood. What's going on with you, my guy? Man, I'm chilling, man. I'm good trying to, um, you know, relax as much as I can. Just came yeah. off of a six day week. Um, you know what I'm saying? They threw me in a shift today. Wasn't happy about that, but you know what I'm saying? got the job done. But I'm good, man. I'm maintaining. How you feeling? Everything good with you? Man, everything cover aesthetic, man. I cannot complain. Uh, life is life, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to enjoy this uh, somewhat of a weather that we've been having. It was 80 degrees last time we talked. And since then, it jumped back down to the 40s and the 50s. <laughs> so <laughs> we got a good 80 degree day. Tomorrow is supposed to be 70 something. So. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm taking it as it comes, bro. Man, I feel you, man. I, th- I think <laughs> it got it got mid eighties down here, so pretty uh pretty warm day, man. But like I yeah. say, with that, you know what I'm saying, that's when you get that that high pollen count, you know what I'm saying? Been tearing mm-hmm. my eyes up today. So mm-hmm. you know, good news, bad news. That's how it be sometimes. Absolutely, man. Um so before we get started, um, we want to first send out our prayers and thoughts to uh, Jamie Foxx and his family um, and friends. Um, it was reported that Jamie Foxx had suffered a stroke and that he is currently in the hospital right now. Um, it's not much news that they've talked about. It's been pretty kind of, you know... Um, on the hush, but uh, I've seen a tweet from his daughter that said that he's doing good. He's, you know, recovering um, pretty well, and he will be back out there soon. So hopefully, um, you know, there's no major damage or, you know, he can come out um, as strong as ever. Man, I like that, um, the fact that there's not a lot coming out, man, because at the end of the day, we're talking about human beings. You know what I'm saying? And even though he's a public figure, like, I don't think that everybody should know every single thing that's going on with him. I agree. So I'm kind of glad that things are on the hush. That's why I really respected Chad with Baldwin. I mean, Chad mm-hmm. with um, uh, Bozeman. No, yeah, I said it right, Bozeman. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he kept cancer quiet, dude. Like, that's, yeah. that was amazing um, to do that. But then at the same time, um, I saw some reports that you know Cameron that they spoke to Cameron Diaz because she's in the new movie that uh, Jamie Foxx is in, and they're uh, continue to film with a uh, with a with a Jamie Foxx double. So okay. I'm thinking that's kind of saying like, look, I think that that's good news, saying that we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna start back shooting because we know that he's gonna be back soon. Yeah. So Absolutely. I think that I think that that could be perceived as good news. So. You know what I'm saying? Prayers up to the Fox family. And um, hopefully, you know, a speedy recovery. Fuck the career shit. Just period. Him yeah. as a person. You but I, I, mean? I, I think it's dope. Um, and I know a lot of people. Well, I'm not going to say a lot of people. But I know some people may say that it's kind of insensitive for them to keep shooting. Um, especially with the condition that he's in. But I kind of disagree with that. Only because, you know what I'm saying? When he comes back um, and he comes back. You know what I'm saying? Healthy and strong. I'm sure that he's going to want to continue right where he left off um, with, you know what I'm saying, whatever recovery time is needed, of course. But I'm sure he's going to want to get right back into the mix only because, you know, he seems like the type of person that is a hard worker. You know, he seems as if especially what we've seen like these last past years like he seems as if like he's doing any and everything he can you know what i'm saying to to keep his face you know what i'm saying relevant and and make sure he's in some type of position um you know what i'm saying to to be 
the Jamie Foxx we know of, like him and his daughter working together on the TV show with uh, Shazam and, you know what I'm saying? Like him having the show on Netflix and so on and so forth. So I, I just, you know what I'm saying? I hope that he can get back to what he was doing before and everything is okay. You know what I'm saying? And I, I hope that we get something to, from him very soon. I would really like to see that, man. Jamie's been, you know what I'm saying, a star for a long time. And, you know, it would it would really hurt, you know what I'm saying, to lose that one for sure. Definitely, man. I feel the exact same way. And uh, so there's two more things I wanted to uh, cover. One, well, it's centered on one person, but there's two separate issues. Mm -hmm. Um, Very first thing, go ahead and get this out of the way. So the news about Jonathan Major, well, the new news that just came out was the fact that he was dropped by his uh, PR team and his management. Mm -hmm. And you know, over the allegations slash arrest with the domestic violence thing with his girlfriend that happened. Um, but I think it was last month when it actually happened. Um, you're starting to see a trickle down effect of what's happening there. And I mean, I, I mean, if you want to, we can, this, I don't really want to get like too deep into like that whole situation. Right. I'm just really just wanted to focus on like the downfall of the first issue about it. Mm-hmm. But like the the whole fact that he has been dropped by them after coming off of, in my opinion, three movies that were I haven't seen one of them, but you know, the reviews, you've seen one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you haven't seen the other one because I spoke about it on the um on what we watching. Right. Is he's he's coming off of devotion. Which he played the first naval pilot, um, black uh, naval pilot, which mm-hmm. was a really pretty good movie. On Par- it's a Paramount Plus movie, and then he comes with, you know, what I'm saying the Ant Man, the new Ant Man movie. Then it comes with Creed three. So he's coming off with three, in my opinion, bangers. Yeah. And then this incident happens, and that story, like we don't know all of the information on what's going on there. But just the fact that, like, what, like, what are some of your thoughts on the fact that he has been dropped by his PR team and his management team? Um, I think because we don't have all the details and people really don't know what's going on. The only thing that we know of so far um, is that he was arrested, you know, and, and taken to jail for it um, and then released after that. So. You know, I know I heard of some text messages or something that w- were shown and everything else, and that's kind of a coin toss um, on the whole situation. However, um, reading a report about it, he was dropped by his management team, like you said, and his PR team. However, he's still working with WME. So right now, that's kind of – the way everything is being reported is kind of seeming – as if things are getting swept under the rug or it's just the fact that he may be innocent. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. it's really a toss up right now. Um, I know that they have reported that there's a video um, that could possibly be released, but it hasn't been so far. So nobody really knows what has happened. Um, But I will say, man, it, it sucks to see you know, somebody who has worked up to a point to where they're finally getting their just due. And right when they get to that point, um, something Mm -hmm. happens to where everything starts to fall apart or looks like it's falling apart. Because once again, we still really can't confirm, you know what I'm saying, if he's guilty or not. Um, But of course, you know, we have to take the word of the victim until um you know until he proves himself innocent um even though they say it's innocent until proven guilty is really kind of the other way around is usually in these cases guilty until proven innocent um because we've seen so many situations like this where <clears throat> excuse me where um people were guilty the whole time and you know we kind of you know, took the victim's word and let it breeze past. I mean, there's been other times where, you know what I'm saying, 
he's been innocent the whole time or he or she has been innocent the whole time and the victim was just, you know what I'm saying, trying to get a payout or, you know, trying to get their own career started for that matter. Or, you know, there was always something of, you know, in it for the victim. Um, but I'm really hoping that these things aren't true. That would really suck to see somebody as good as Jonathan Major. And with the career that he has, I don't I don't see um I don't see a guy like him being, you know what I'm saying, in a in a bad place anytime soon. If you look at his history, I mean Lovecraft Country, the harder they fall, then you know, um then he's doing the Creed movie, you know, and now he was, you know, had a whole slate of movies and TV shows that he was going to be featured in in Disney. And that's, you know what I'm saying? All that's up in the air at this point because we don't, you know, know what's going on. And then, you know, like you said, the devotion movie. So, I mean, like, no, there was no telling where this guy could have been. Um, I feel like had all this not had happened, he could have possibly been in the villain side of what Chadwick Boseman was as far as, you know, the way that, Black Panther was incorporated in so many different Marvel movies. I felt like this is where Jonathan Majors was going to go um, as far as being the villain of, you know what I'm saying, these next few phases. Um, and unfortunately, you know, all of that is a toss-up at this point because of these allegations and because of what's going on. Man, definitely. And you took me right into that next point. You know, the, the deal that he had with Disney on playing Kane. And I saw a report. Like I said, nothing is written in stone yet. Like, everything right. is still a toss-up. But there was a report that I saw, and it was like I was caught in the middle because I was like, yo, I do not know how to feel about this. Right. I hate to see what's going on with him. And like I say, look, if 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 he's guilty, he's guilty. Then, you know what I mean, I, I guess you would have to say that he deserved what's happening to him. Mm -hmm. But – if he's innocent, he does it. But let me say this. The report that I saw, I don't man, I don't know how to feel about it because supposedly if Marvel takes the stand on removing him as Kane, because not, nothing's done yet. It's just rumors. The rumor is Damson Idris is the next person or the person that's being looked at to replace him as Kane. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, okay. I know I'm supposed to feel bad for Jonathan Majors, but it's like, yo, Dampson, man, the way he's performing as of late mm -hmm. on Snowfall, I just don't know if I'm really going to be mad at that. So I, I can't agree with you, man. I'm sorry. Well, see, I, I, see, I would ha see, that's why I would have to uh, defer to you because yeah. I've only seen him as Kane and Loki. Yeah. And that was, what, five, five ten minutes? So... Yeah. I haven't really seen him seen him as Kane. Right. I'm just speaking on just how I feel about Damson, but you can speak more on this. Like yeah. why you disagree? Um, only because so with Jonathan Majors, right? Like we we've seen dude, like dude is is stacked, dude is brolic, right? And mm -hmm. um him playing that role, even when he's not angry or even when he's not serious he's menacing on film like the if you go back and watch that loki scene that's a that's a minute that's a very menacing scene because mm -hmm. you know even when even if you don't know who his character is like even this is if this is your first introduction in the marvel or whatever the case may be and you have no idea who he is you know when you see him and they talk to him and they're sitting down in that room and they're having a conversation back and forth and he's giving you monologues and dialogue you know that he's the bad guy yeah you know for sure right and when he's in the ant-man movie even then he's just as menacing if not more. And so I'm not sure if Damson Idris can provide that on film. We've seen so, what he's doing Snowfall, which yeah. is to me something that he's built up to, right? So mm -hmm. seeing him on Snowfall for six seasons, we know for a fact that he started off as this kid who grew into this man who then grew into this monster. But even like, even me watching Snowfall, like 
seeing Damson do certain things is he has to be angry in order for it to come across as, oh, okay, like he's serious. Did, he didn't, Jonathan Majors didn't have to do that. Jonathan, it was times in the movie and even in the Loki show where Jonathan Major was just talking. And I'm talking about just a calm tone voice, everything. And it just came across as like, oh, this dude is about business. Like if they cross this mug, this is going to be some issues. And so I feel like knowing that and, you know, everything surrounding that, I'm not sure if, uh, if, if Damson can pick up that slack. I don't so, think. so you're talking more of a physical appearance or a physical in like not being as menacing enough? Both because his Both. his okay. appearance, like his physical added to that. Cause like in the like in the movie, he's a big well, if you look at him, you can tell he's a big dude. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. And not not big as in like super tall and but I mean just like as far as his stature, like he looks like a running back. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he looks like he can he can run you over real quick, no issues. Yeah, look like Sean Taylor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like he, I mean, he looks the part, bro. Like he he in shape, he, he got the muscles, you know what I'm saying? Like he he has the 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 serious tone in his voice. He has the, the ability to switch to being playful and then going back. But even when he's being playful, like how we seen in the in the Loki show, even when he was playing around, it, it still felt menacing. It still felt like, OK, this this something about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Or even if something wasn't about to happen, you still felt kind of that little feeling in your stomach like, yeah, something ain't right about this dude. And so. Just just seeing what Damson has done on Snowfall. I know I've seen them. I forgot what the other movie was that they had on Netflix or one of those. I, yeah, those futuristic movies. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, what I'm saying he was working with uh, Anthony Mackie. Even mm -hmm. then, like, nah, I just, I just haven't seen anything from Damson that could possibly, you know, what I'm saying, like I said, and I don't want to be disrespectful in saying it, but just, you know, pick up that slack. Like to me, you would have to find somebody who is of that same stature because to go from Jonathan Majors to Damson is a that's a huge physical difference. And I feel like sure. if you could find somebody of either his body type, close to his body type, or even you know, a step over it, then then you'd have something there. What do you think of somebody more like is his name his name John Bo Bogega, what's his name? John uh, Boyega? Hell no. No. Uh, no. No, 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 no. I I don't I don't think Michael B. Jordan could do it. No, not at all. Well, we um, know Michael B. Jordan to be Killmonger, so that's yeah, uh, yeah. So he's table. Killmonger. Yeah. yeah. Uh I don't even really think John David Washington could really nah. could you would, I mean like if if you if you could find another Maybe because to me, the way I look at it, like if you could find another maybe like wrestler who wanted to jump into acting and who could actually act for real and have them do it, then you would have something for sure. Okay. For sure. Because, okay. I mean, that's the that's the only person I could think of that would have that body type that would be able to at least, you know, what I'm saying have the acting experience to do that because of wrestling and because of that wrestling background, which is to me why Batista, you know what I'm saying, The Rock and all those guys and John Cena, they do so well because they have to, you know what I'm saying, actually do performances. And so for somebody like that to come from that background to jump into that, that would be probably, that would be a better fit to me. Michael J. White, too, too old, right? It is too old, but exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely too old, but exactly what I'm talking about. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. I, I just wanted to I just wanted to speak on the man. It's movie related, it's stuff that's yeah, swirling sure. around in the world. Um shit, we haven't done it in a while, which I'm glad we haven't. Um, because mm -hmm. I'm not up to speed on the, the new stuff yet. But you know, because yeah. we've done what like two MCU episodes, I think we've yep. done in the past. Yep. We usually do them towards the end of everything, so yeah. Yeah, that, that usually helps. Um Cool. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into our feature presentation, man. Um, yes, sir. Super excited. You know what I'm saying? Super, super geeked about this one, bro. 
Uh, this is one that as soon as I seen the trailer for it, I jumped up and I said, I am going to see that. <laughs> um, just the name alone tells you everything you need to know. One of the biggest fears um, of anybody is just the bear part. But to know that the bear is on cocaine should make you that much more scared. Um, yes, we're talking about cocaine bear, man. Um, not exactly where I thought they would take it. But uh, it was it was a, a pleasant movie nonetheless. Um, for those who don't know, Cocaine Bear is a movie that's basically um, that's basically loosely based off of um, a true story in which a bear had eaten cocaine that was found. I believe it was in. I, I don't. It was in. What well, I know, the movie was in Tennessee. So I'm not sure if the real story was in Tennessee or not because I didn't get a chance to see that. But I'm going to go ahead and say Tennessee because at the end they had some stuff that they said, so it might be. Um, but the bear ate the cocaine and went on the rampage. Um, and in the movie, it is loosely based and highly exaggerated, but it's worth every kill in the movie. So the first thing is first. Like I said, I didn't think they were going to take this down that. I thought they were going to go the comedy route, like 100% comedy route. Mm -hmm. However, like this turned into a thriller that fast. As soon as it comes on, it's a thriller. It's not even a, it, it's a, it's a comedy for sure. Cause it got some, it got a lot of funny moments in it, but it's definitely a thriller, bro. Um, so <laughs> I've seen this movie probably about seven times already. Damn. Yes, for sure. Um, because this this how much is this is how much I've enjoyed it. So how do you feel about this joint? All right. So if you don't mind, there's something I want to go over first, and then I'll tell you my thoughts. So okay. for the people who don't know, mm -hmm. this is Elizabeth Banks film Absolutely. and her first time being a director. Absolutely. And to know that and to know, well, I don't know Elizabeth Banks, but to, to see some of her work, like what I like about Elizabeth Banks is the fact that she does not put herself in a box. Like she does horror movies. She does thrillers. She does drama. She action. does comedy action. Like she's really all over space. She's a really, really good actress. Like, well like that she's sure. something well, very well rounded. That's why we need to we need to add her to the list too. Because yeah. you know, what I feel like because I follow her on Instagram, it seems like her personality is in this field though. Yes. And like when when you see her if Zach and Mira make a porno. Super and when you see yeah and like when you see her play the role that she played in 40 year old virgin mm -hmm. it's like okay we, we see this funny side of her, mm -hmm. so it kind of makes sense that for her to get into that director's chair and to put out her first film and it actually be fucking Cocaine Bear, right? Yes. So I wanted to speak on that first, just the fact that like this is her film. But for it to be what it was, like you said, I thought it was going to be more in that comedy round. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely had moments in it where you could see what they was trying to give you, like that that humor, you know, just the fact that this very very unattractive fat lady trying to put on fucking makeup and cologne and shit to try to look good for the, the goofiest dude ever. They made shout the perfect to... fucking couple. Okay, now wait, 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 wait. I'm glad you said that. So shout out first and foremost, shout out to Margot Martindale because now she played the park ranger. But shout out to Jesse Tyler Ferguson for playing the the um the nature dude. So when I seen him, I kept saying, bro, this dude looks so familiar. I know who this dude is, but I couldn't put my finger on it until I just looked him up on IMDb. If, for people who don't know who Jesse Tyler Ferguson is, he is the son of um he plays um, the son on Modern Family. He plays the gay son on Modern Family. When I tell you, bro, this dude, he he need he he needs to just stay in comedy because his character was hilarious. I'm talking hilarious. 
when the little boy was in the tree <laughs> and he said, a bear ate cocaine and he just go around killing everybody. He was like, no, there, there's no way a bear ate cocaine. You must have done something to it. Bro, I busted out. <laughs> you, go ahead. Go ahead, though. But that, that had me rolling. Nah, like it was just like little shit like that, and like when those two kids were uh was walking through the park, <laughs> he looked at that side. He said, "Hey, he said, look like these two deers are fucking." <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> so I mean, look, it had its moments, but it was like, but the whole thing that was that was around like David, and like the fact of like. They're like, first of all, that whole bathroom scene was mm -hmm. terrible. Like, I'm sorry. Like, like when when those three kids came in there to try to rob them. Yeah. Like, look, okay, look, O'Shea, like your dad is a legend and all this type of stuff. But like, sure. that was the worst beat up scene I've ever seen in my life. Like, that was terrible. But that's what makes this movie so great, <laughs> bro. That's what makes this movie so great because first and foremost, none of this shit is taken seriously. And I appreciate that so much. None of it is taken serious. It's great acting, first and foremost. Let me get that out the way. It's actually great acting. But none of this is taken serious. And I got to give credit to O'Shea Jackson Jr., man, because he's also another one of those people who have been doing this thing. Um, not only does he have this, he's had a few other movies, but he's also in the Star Wars universe as well. So he's another one of those, you know what I'm saying, Disney guys who... You know what I'm saying? Got a lot going on. He was in the Mandalorian. I mean, not the Mandalorian show. He was in the, uh, um, the Obi-Wan show. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more of him in Star Wars to have that up under your belt early as, you know what I'm saying, this is in his career, especially with Star Wars being so big, that is major. So shout out to him. Yeah, man, most definitely, man, because he's definitely take a, a totally different route than yeah. his father did. Yeah. Um, but no, like what you're saying is, is completely right. And I think that that's that's why it makes so much sense that it's mm -hmm. Elizabeth Banks, because when you think about like those two movies, like when you zero in on Zach and Mary mm -hmm. and 40 year old version, just like the person that she's playing, like none of this shit is fucking serious. And it's just like yep. everything is carefree. Like I don't think that what he was looking for was an acting clinic. You right. know what I'm saying? Like this movie, I felt like a lot of the shit was probably like mistakes. And it was like, you know what? That shit is gonna work. Like I, I had it in my mind going one way, but yeah. even though y'all fucked that up, we're gonna keep that. Like I, 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 felt like, I do, I agree. I think it was a lot of improv in this movie, man. It, for sure, it had to be. It was too funny for it not to be. And I think that that goes off of her personality because I heard someone else, another podcast, talking about, and they was just saying that they were really surprised that they took the opposite approach. They was just like, with her being so talented, like mm -hmm. this being her first movie, they thought that it was a disappointment. And I was just like, wow. you like the way you put it. I agree with what you said because I see what they saying. Like if, if they was wanting cocaine bear to be that movie, that was like the plot gotta be this. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I, I just don't think that that's what they were. I don't think that's what she was going for with this movie. I agree. I don't, I don't even think that even make like now that I've watched it and seen it, like even making it a comedy wouldn't have had the same effect. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But, like, just, like, even, like, the scene where when the <laughs> – because, like, they mixed a lot of shit in together. So when the, when the, when the ambulance showed up to the park uh, office, and so, like, they went in, they couldn't get the door open. Fat yeah. dude dead on the floor, right? Yeah. After the late – which is funny as fuck. Is that the lady was like open the door like before they before that the lady was like open up the door real slowly so she opened up the door and then it was like dude was like that's a bear and then she shot that motherfucker in the head. Yeah. <laughs> no, the craziest the craziest thing is that when she shoots, she closes her eyes. Did you notice that? Yes, I did <laughs> notice that. That's why because the dude was clearly in the way. Yes. Clearly in the way. <laughs> Why do you have a gun? 
What is the purpose of her having every time she shot that gun, but her eyes were closed, bro? I'm like, you there's nothing that you can do closing your eyes shooting that goddamn gun. Hey, but that shit remind me of uh but it, this I don't know why it reminded me of that. But like every anytime I think of like a serious moment and somebody closed their eyes, I think mm-hmm. of the Titanic when Rose was trying to get Jack and she had the axe. Oh. <laughs> she hit that <laughs> she hit her handcuffs with her eyes closed, man. But um, but anyway, yeah, because like there was like a clean five seconds, and she yeah. shot this dude dead in the head. Absolutely, and it was because her damn eyes was closed. Yes. So then, when the ambulance shows up, dude is still on the floor right in front of the door, mm-hmm. and so they see the dead dude on the ground. They're like, "Oh shit!" Like this is crazy. They said that the dude had a uh had a concussion, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And so then the dude opened up the closet. And then you see fucking body parts and a head roll up to the door. You like, what the fuck? And so then he see the bear and then he closed the door real slowly. <laughs> and that motherfucker bust that motherfucker down. Hey, but that, that, that was hilarious. And then like the he kept the bear kept banging on the door while it was on top no, of him and when shit. The bear was drooling and it almost got in his mouth, bro. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh, that shit was the worst. That was the worst. Yeah, that's man. It, it, but like she, she found like to me, like don't get me wrong, like this, this movie, was, in my opinion, like it was a masterpiece or anything like that. But I think that what was so genius about what she did was, like this is like what you was telling me some stuff before we started. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like. The, the way that people view films now, like there are a lot of people that are like me. And like when we do uh, what we got lined up soon, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying our top 10 movies of all time, like mm-hmm. a lot of my shit is serious drama, suspense, mystery. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's just the type of person I am. I like a lot of movies where you have to sit down and pay attention and you know what I mean? And all that type stuff. But with the way that movies are going now with the attention spans being what they are, everything is catchy. And you were saying that you saw some shit about, I think you said what, cocaine shark or some shit? Yeah. So, like, what she did is she started a trend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this, like, like, Sharknado, even though Sharknado ended up, like, there, in my opinion, I'm sorry, they were like the dumbest, what, seven, six? I don't know how many they got yeah. up to. They were the dumbest movies, but they had a period of time mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. everybody was talking about fucking Sharknado. Right. And it got to a point where they got the most fucking cameos. Like, it was the dumbest movie idea of all time. But Absolutely, everybody. Because there's no way sharks are going to survive in a tornado. Exactly. But look how many people fucking jumped in on it to get cameos on it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it because it caught a trend, but like most people are really looking for an escape when it comes to movies and shit. Mm-hmm. So I think what the genius was of what she did was she was like, "Yo, I'm gonna take this idea because from I heard a little bit about the real story. It obviously didn't happen. Nothing like this. Like the bear right. didn't go like on a ramp. Like it was some shit about like it 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 act." Like very aggressively or whatever. I think the bear actually died. I think it said like his heart ended up stopping or some shit like Man, that. Man, as much cocaine as that bear ate in that movie, that's what I waited on dude like the whole I'm like, this bear has to die, bro. I said, this bear survives this. This is the greatest bear of all time. <laughs> but like I, the I just, 80s I, had I, nothing on that bear. I'm telling you. Definitely. But no, like, like honestly, I, I just felt like what she did was I felt like it was genius because now. Like you said, a fucking cocaine shark. Now, next mm-hmm. thing you know, it's gonna be a cocaine alligator. They also and... had they also had the the shark exorcist. Yo, as well. So just to let y'all know, if y'all looking for a bad movie to get high. To watch, <laughs> I mean, get high to and watch. Yeah, cocaine shark and shark exorcist are definitely out there. Yeah. So, but I look, dude. You you said it. Perfectly. I, I don't think that this is like a serious, serious movie. I think that this movie was trend. I think it's trendy. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people gonna jump on this trend because that's what a lot of 
people like to see. They like to see like these movies that aren't that serious. We're not looking for an acting clinic. Like I, I was listening to a podcast today. They said this new movie that um Martin uh, Scorsese got coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, same usual suspects, Mark, uh, Robert De Niro, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, all this type yeah. shit. But they said it's supposed to be the longest movie ever. It's supposed to be four hours. Now, I don't know why Martin Scorsese just won't make this shit in the four parts or whatever. Like, like I said, the okay, to so me, here, I got an I got an idea why though. I, because, I do too because okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like. I thought the Irishman was good. Now, yeah. was it CGI? Was it trash? That was trash. And the fact mm -hmm. that you got Robert De Niro out here trying to stump somebody at 80 years old, that shit looked terrible. But the plot of the movie <laughs> and the writing of the movie was great. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that, like, come on, dude. Like, you want it feels different when you're watching, even if you binge a show and you've been watching this shit for four hours, it feels different mm -hmm. than just watching four straight hours. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I understand that Martin is still in the 70s and the 80s. He's like, yo, this is how movies supposed to be made. Right. And he don't want to cut in it now. But with the way that Hollywood is going, shit is more geared towards shit like Cocaine Bear. So I think what Elizabeth mm -hmm. Banks did, I think is very smart and very trendy. But but uh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you good. You good. So the the crazy thing about it, right? Like you said that Scorsese did. He, they're supposed to, or he's supposed to be doing a four hour movie, right? Cocaine Bear is only an hour and thirty five minutes long. Mm -hmm. That's a regular feature film. For the you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying for the most part, usually when an hour is like two, I mean when a movie is like two hours, two and a half hours long, that's usually you know what I'm saying like those like a Scorsese type film. Um, but I, I think I get why he's doing the whole four hours thing. And, and I feel like what he's trying to do, um, the same thing that he did with the Irishman, is he's trying to tell these elaborate stories. And because, you know, it seems as if he's not um, letting himself into getting into that trendy lane, that it feels as if, like, he can't tell a story under, you know what I'm saying, two hours mm -hmm. or under two hours and 20 minutes, especially when it comes to these stories. And you already know what type of story is going to be if it has De Niro and all these guys in it. It's more than likely going to be one of those mob type movies. Um, the only thing that I see a downfall of that being is that that's all he's putting out. And in today's society, bro, you have to be just like how Elizabeth Banks is. You have to be well-rounded. You have to be able to tell other stories. Nobody's going to want to keep watching mob stories all the time. And I'm telling you now, nobody's going to want to go see four hours of a fucking mob movie. I can promise you that. I'm talking about at home, anywhere. Like you said, nobody's going to want to sit through four fucking hours of a mob movie. Um, even with the Irishman, people were so happy because it got released to Netflix that, you know what I'm saying, they could at least watch half of it and then, all right, I'm going to go do some other shit and then come back and finish it. Um, and I think that's the that's the benefit of what binge watching has done for the most part is the fact of even though you'll sit for six hours and watch a whole season, there's breaks in between that. You yes. know what I'm saying? And there's some there's a it's an ending to it. So you can if you gotta get up and go do something, you can go do that. Or you know what I'm saying? If you want to set up your weekend to go do that, you'll go do that. Nobody's setting up a weekend to watch a fucking four hour movie, bro. Come on now. Yes. You killing me. It, yeah, the same here. And I told you, dude, I've I think I've seen the Irishman maybe three times, probably two. Yeah, two times. Both times, I did not sit there and watch the whole three hours and 12 minutes. Like, right. I had to break that shit up. I was like, I can't sit here and watch this much of it. But to get to this, I, I think that, yo, like, the whole scene of, first <laughs> of all, to even put in the movie where there's two kids walking through a fucking forest and they find this package and they're like yo oh, fucking kilo of cocaine they say this for them to know in 1985 yo this is cocaine yeah. and so dude little kid like oh such and such do cocaine and so 
they going back and forth, back and forth. He was, and she was like, so what are you supposed to do? He was like, oh, you're supposed to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, to put in a movie a fucking kid with a knife, cut, mm-hmm. open the damn package, get this shit out, okay. and put it in a mouth? Yo. Dude, twice, though. You did it twice. Twice. Yeah, you did it twice. Yo, hilarious. Yeah. But just the fact that you got two kids in the forest by eating cocaine, Bruh. that's fucking hilarious, dude. Absolutely. So, um, what what is <laughs> who was the person that you thought you know what I'm saying stood out in this movie? Like who who were the characters oh, that stood come out? Come on, come on, man! Detective Bob Springs, man. What you talking Talk about? about, Talk about <laughs> yeah. First about of it, all, man. first of all, one of the greatest voices in Hollywood is absolutely. <laughs> Shout out to Isaiah Whitlock Jr., man. Hey, he 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 don't even try, and and, and you know they said he. I don't think he did it in this movie. He didn't do the she. No. <laughs> he didn't no. do it. No. Oh man, now nah, that's his that's his thing yeah. though. But Absolutely. he don't nobody say, like the way Samuel L. Jackson say motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That's the way he say shit. That shit hey, is hilarious. Let me tell you something. Greatest scene in the movie came from him when that motherfucker was on top of the gazebo. <laughs> and he, and he had them at gunpoint. And he told them motherfuckers, everybody, stand where you are. Don't you move. He said, Yeah, you're going to jail. It was like <laughs> drug sentences been fucked since Nixon. He said, <laughs> he said, get ready. And nigga said, get ready to shit in front of your cellmate <laughs> and, and, and supervise shower times, bruh. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. That motherfucker said you're going to do 10 to 15. Bro, nothing is funnier than that, bro. That's <laughs> the greatest scene in the movie. Because it was unnecessary. It was so unnecessary for him to go on that rant, bro. That nigga said, that's right. Jeff says it's been fucked since Nixon. You're going to do about, let me say, get ready for about 10 to 15. It was like you go have you got the shit in front of yourself, mate. It's gonna be super five times. Dude laid down and was like, I don't want the shit in front of myself. <laughs> I can't shit in front of people. I like the shit in peace. <laughs> Yo, that shit was hilarious. Hey man. And then hey, that was <laughs> and then the fact uh, that this motherfucker is in Somewhere in Tennessee, mm-hmm. and he knows because he's been following um Sid White for a minute, and so he goes up to uh he goes up to uh, uh Officer Mitchell mm-hmm. and like yo I need you to watch my dog because I need to go to Georgia, and she was like wait a minute she said, they got something to do with this Sid White guy and this cocaine coming out of the air whatever. She's like, man, that ain't your jurisdiction. <laughs> this motherfucker just gonna go to Georgia, like completely out of his jurisdiction to try to arrest somebody. Where if you know, like first of all, if, if it, the, the only people that can go across state lines and don't have to say shit to you is fucking FBI, motherfucker. Like mm-hmm. for you to be a a fucking detective wherever you are in Tennessee to think you're just gonna go somewhere and make an arrest. That's fucking funny. But the fact that you want her, cause like he asked her like, yo, what you got planned tonight? And she looked at him like, what the fuck? And then he was like, I just need you to watch my dog. I was like, yo, but I didn't know what was coming. Was <laughs> I was like, I was the like, I that, know the fact that she was ready to turn him down for no reason. <laughs> she was so ready. Every she time so he ready. talked, she was ready to turn him down for nothing. He was none. He was none. The the more interested in her at all. At all. And that he fucking loved great. that damn dog. That shit was funny. Absolutely. But like, yeah, like to me, he was the highlight of the movie, man. And like. When he was like on top of that gazebo, like that everything Bro. about that. This motherfucker, <laughs> this motherfucker shot, <laughs> this motherfucker shot David two fingers off. And the crazy Bro. part was they wasn't even beside was, no, each other. Was, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. When he was on there and Sid shot him, that nigga said, Ugh. 
Shit, <laughs> it feel, bro. <laughs> hey man, when I tell you, bro, that that is that is one of the funniest scenes in a movie, bro. That shit had me crying, bro. That man, was funny as fuck, man. It tripped me. I thought you was about to say when he shot his fingers off and he asked the dude to pick up. He said, Eddie, he said, pick up my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and yo, he was oh, hot about that jersey, but bro, he yeah. got stabbed in the back. He's yeah. mad. And then he got his fang- finger, two fingers shot off and he had to wrap that damn hand up. He was like, Man, my fucking jersey. <laughs> bro, he was going through it. He messed up his Jordans in the beginning of the movie, bro. He got his jersey messed up. Like, he was really going through it, man. No, when they was hiking to go to the gazebo, and uh, um, damn, what's the dude name? Eddie and Stash was, was bonding. Bro, that oh. shit, that <laughs> he rolling. That shit was funny as fuck, bro. David was so irritated, bro. He like, man, what is going on? No. He was like, hey, don't interrupt him. He was like, he he trying to what do you say? He what is he trying to uh he said something. He was uh-huh. doing something, but whatever they were talking about, they was bonding over it and they started hugging. He was like, Oh, y'all gonna hug. He was like, Okay. <laughs> That's what happened, <laughs> bro. I'm telling you, it was some it was some very funny moments in this movie, man. Um, and, and it was, it was, a, it's, to me, it's one of those movies that, you know what I'm saying? Like a pineapple express, you know what I'm saying? Like, a um, man, you know what I'm saying? Just in that realm of how, Rogan right. This is the up, end. And yeah. And like how Rogan don't look up and comedy, shit. You can tell Elizabeth Banks is, you know what I'm saying? Is as much a part of that as, as anybody else that has been, you know what I'm saying? In, in those, um, circles. And you can see that just by all of the different things that was happening. Like, for instance, when Peter climbed up the tree and the bear, you know what I'm saying, was about to, you know what I'm saying, go get, um, what's the little boy's name? Was about to go get Henry. And then it smelled the cocaine on, on Peter. So it jumped down and climbed up there to them and started eating them. Yo, that <laughs> Man, was crazy. Bro, the crazy part is they let his body fall and his neck snap. That's overkill, bro. There's no need for that. <laughs> He was getting yeah. eaten in the tree, bro. There was and no then the, that. And then the leg fell down last. <laughs> bro, I'm talking about no, when the when the girl um oh when Elsa when she got ate in the beginning and she got dragged back into the woods and they just threw the leg out there and the dude was like, oh <laughs> <laughs> bro, it was it was so many crazy moments in this movie, bro. It just that's why I said, man, like the route that they took, it was still funny, but the route that they took, I did not expect this at all. And to me, that's what makes it that much better. Because, you know what I'm saying, knowing the title, seeing the trailer, you thinking that this is going to be, like, a funny movie. Like, but it's funny, but it's definitely a thriller. Like, this bear was on was on a, a, a kill spree, bro. This is the, the craziest kill streak I've ever seen in the movie. This bear is undefeated. Yo, and... Henry to sit there to have the look when when um oh, what's her name when um <clears throat> when Siri no <clears throat> the mom oh when she, when she came and saw Henry in the in the uh, tree yeah and then she was like why are you up in that tree he was like because there's a cocaine bear on the loose and she was like you do know bears can climb trees right he's like no no <laughs> he said. He said, he said, uh, damn, I forgot her last name, but he, Mrs. Mrs. Kennedy or Ken or something. He was like, we skipped school. <laughs> she was like, yeah, no shit. Uh, no. <laughs> like, you in the tree right now, dumb, bro. That shit had me rolling, man. I'm just, yeah, that was funny. It's, it's just funny, bro. So just to see, you know what I'm saying, like all of these different actors be able to pull this together and make this as funny as it is, because you have so many different styles of comedic acting in this. Like, you got, like, direct, straight comedy. You got, you know what I'm saying, like that dry humor. You got dark humor in it. You got twisted humor. I mean, like, it's so many different styles in this, that, and it all comes together perfectly. Um, Man, rest in peace, Ray Liotta, man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Sid White, bro, with that mullet and them glasses, bro. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> man. You talking about the perfect costume? 
The, that costume <laughs> could not have fit on anybody better, bro. Ray Liotta, whoever did the costume design on that had Ray Liotta. Hey, he looked hilarious from start <laughs> to finish, bro. You could tell whatever he did, he definitely dealt cocaine. He looked like a cocaine dealer. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a top-notch cocaine dealer for sure. That nigga had that leather jacket, that brown leather jacket on and everything, bro. That, that was great. They did a great job putting it, putting his costume together, man. They did. Ray, Ray Liotta, yeah. uh, rest in peace to him. He definitely yeah. looked wild, but yeah, that, with the sunglasses, man, that shit was funny. But uh, yeah, man, he he was <laughs> he was all about that cocaine, man. Yeah. And then that damn week, <laughs> yeah, oh man, definitely an asshole, man. He kept telling the sun he wasn't shit, like telling them they was soft because uh. He let the uh he let the one girl go. Let the officer cause, go. Yeah. yeah, cause he was she was just like yo like I'm done. And then uh old dude stuck he like he was about to shoot her. The uh, dude stuck in front of her, mm -hmm. so he wouldn't shoot her. Or whatever he was like, man, y'all going soft. And then like man, he was about to damn shoot the kids and everything. Like he he just didn't give a fuck. But cause he he they was gonna be on his head, man. Exactly. Like you also th this is the seriousness of it. It's like when you know and watch as much of like that even some of the shit that we covered on here yeah i mean snowfall shit when 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 somebody is delivering a package like you are accountable for that fucking package though it, and it's a lot of money on that package a lot of money and like they're gonna be looking for their return mm -hmm. so he said 70 now, million dollars worth of cocaine bro well this is the crazy part how the movie even started first of all yeah, if you right. are dumping a package, yo, you dump the shit all together. Do you know how fast planes are moving? Yeah, man, you can. He's kicking bags out the fucking plane. These bags could be a fucking half a mile, a mile apart. Absolutely. How fast the damn plane is going? Absolutely. That plan made no fucking sense at all. And then my dude tries to jump out the plane and hit his head on the fucking plane and fell out that bitch. Stupid man. And then get to pull his parachute and die. <laughs> no, this is the this is the crazy part though. That when they found him, they found they also found a bag of cocaine with him. So it was a total of like three or four bags that was just sprawled out across this area. Yo, come on. I don't know if he was high. He had to be high. Yeah. Up there. Absolutely. Because <laughs> he was he, he he was sniffing it. <laughs> you didn't see that? Yo, he was Before high as he fuck, dude. Out, he sniffed it. Because I just don't... Uh, I don't really think people understand how fucking fast these damn planes are going and for him to be throwing out individual bags at Man. one time. Like... Man. Dancing while he was doing it, though. Don't forget Dancing while he was doing dancing. it. Yes. No, but... Man, it's gonna... You know how long... You're going to be in the forest looking for all, like, let's say the shipment was 12 bags. You know how long it's going to take you to find the 12 bags if you're throwing the bitches out individually? Yeah, some, somebody was going to be missing some cocaine for sure. Dude, that's for a two-day sure. two job, man. Bro, they said it's still, <laughs> it's still bricks out there. Man, you want to know how many people have been probably going around searching? That damn it's, place. It's, it, I, I, when I seen it, I'm like, boy, I know it's crackheads all through that area. <laughs> I already know. Right, they're still fucking looking for them bags, man. Absolutely, man. Um, so I mean, we pretty much cover everybody, man. We gotta, we gotta cover the EMTs that came in. Oh, we spoke yes. a little bit about them, but to me, that was the that was like the kill of the movie for sure. Um, the EMTs, like you said earlier, they came in because they got a call for a concussion. Um, they found a dude, you know what I'm saying, got shot in the head. They go in there. They find a park ranger sitting there, you know what I'm saying. She's so traumatized, she can't speak. Dude opened the door. He realizes a bear in there. He closed the door. Bear busts the door down. The lady EMT helped the park ranger into the, you know what I'm saying, into the truck, strap her down real quick. Get in the I mean, get in the driver's seat. Get ready to start that bad boy. Dude, throw a bag. The bear thought the bag was, you know, what I'm saying, had cocaine in it because it was red. So the bear go to the bag. My man, get up. Get in the EMT. They peel off. The bear begins to chase them. 
<laughs> the bear chases them. I don't know how fast an ambulance truck can go. <laughs> but the fact that the bear caught the ambulance truck was the best part of the movie to me. <laughs> it jumped, it, it, it literally chased it down, jumped into the back of the truck, knocks the park ranger out while she's strapped to the, to the table. She falls on the road, skids her face up. She already done got attacked by the bear. She done got her ass cheek ripped off. Like, so she done already been through it. Then it starts to maul the EMT dude. He falls into the front of the truck, raises his hand, hand falls down, then split his wrist open. Brings him back. And then they show the scene where the bear is biting this dude in the head, bro. <laughs> the girl looks back, blood squirts in her face. She turns around. What happens? Boom! Hit the goddamn tree. She flies out the windshield. Dies on impact. Bear just walk off like ain't nothing happened. <laughs> that was a good fucking sequence, dude. Man, the, the music, everything around that, that was just a great scene. All the, the slow motion when the bear jump in and all that, it was just a great scene all together. I thought that was a great piece to add in the movie, man. They did it... Um, a good job putting that scene together and making everything work for that. Um, are we missing anything? Uh, I mean, I can't, <clears throat> I can't think of anything else to to necessarily single out except the fact that, like, at the end of the movie, when um, when the conclusion comes and and uh, so the lady she got, you know, what I'm saying her child and mm -hmm. uh, and Henry and they're leaving. <laughs> And they see the uh, the park ranger on the ground. So like, don't look at it. He was like, "No, nah, I gotta look." He's like, "Ugh!" <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's like she's just out there fucking skid marks of her face. Mm -hmm. oh, I just thought that that was funny. Um, but now, nah, like, I mean, I think that everything that probably needed to be said, like about this movie, yeah. Um, like you said, a lot of the kills were overkill. Um, I thought they did a really good job with the blood, though. Um. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How they had the old lady uh ass scratched up. That yeah. shit look real. Yeah. Um but nah, I mean like, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I think we pretty much touched everything that was that was very significant about the movie. And then how they tried to make it real with like fucking news reports and shit. Yeah. But nah, I, I thought, that was that, yeah. that added to the funniness, man, for sure. Um, let's go ahead and get into the uh fire flames, bro. Let's do it. Yoga fire, yoga flame. All right, man. So, um, I start this one off. Um, hilarious movie. It it took me on a little spin. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy every minute of this movie. This was a movie that I did not pause. I did not get up to stop and go do something. I didn't do any of that. I didn't pick my phone up. None of that. Um, I laughed through it. You know what I'm saying? Just everything about this movie just came together great. Elizabeth Banks, bravo. You did an amazing job. Um, shout out to O'Shea Jackson Jr. Um, shout out to Kerry Russell. Shout out to Isaiah Whitlock. Rest in peace to Ray Liotta. Um, shout out to Jesse Tyler Ferguson. The cast did an amazing job. Um, I'm going to give this a four. Okay. <clears throat> uh, for me, um, I think the impact of this movie and the personality of Elizabeth Banks, I think that, like I said earlier in the pod, I don't think that this was supposed to have been taken seriously. Right. Um, so I think that, like, like I said earlier, man, like, I mean, now we got a cocaine shark. I'm not mm -hmm. going to be surprised if we start seeing all these other animals and they're trying to do a whole cocaine spoof thing. Because um, I think that what she did is she started a wave. And that's what mm -hmm. I think that even though I'm going to give this movie a three, I think that the impact of the movie is going to be more of a four. Because I think that everybody's going to take this cocaine story and the mm -hmm. animal story and everybody's gonna try to get their shine. Yeah. So I think that 
with TikTok being the way that it is, with you know Netflix being just. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say Netflix take anything, but they be taking a lot of shit. Absolutely. So you know what I'm saying? Like I think there's gonna be a lot of people that's gonna try to jump on this wave. So I think that she started something. Mm-hmm. And I think the impact of this movie is going to be a four, but just from what I've seen, I'm going to give it a three. But knowing, not knowing, but you know what I'm trying to say. Seeing some of the personality traits that I see from following her on Instagram and seeing her in certain movies, I'm not surprised that she's the one who did this movie. I agree. I definitely agree. And I will say this. You brought up a um, you brought up an interesting point about how they're going to kind of take this trend and run with it. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing like stories like this get turned into movies. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know what I'm saying? Like for this one, it was a bear eating cocaine or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, I don't know, a, 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 somebody chicken coop or, you know what I'm saying? Just any crazy thing like that. Like it just, I feel like all, <clears throat> all of those weird, bizarre stories, people are going to start looking for those and they're going to start trying to make, um, they're going to start trying to make movies off of those because, I mean, the, the scripts just, you know, it's cliche to say, of course, but the scripts write themselves. Um, yeah. I'm sure just hearing this story and knowing anything about this story, I'm sure they wrote this as, as soon as they heard about it. You you really couldn't even mess this one up. I feel like um, I don't feel like it was a huge success in the box office because um, I haven't really heard like of it. You know what I'm saying? Getting close to any records, or I haven't even heard anything from it since it's been released, and it kind of got put on streaming pretty quickly, which is um, something we might have to talk about in the near future about how a lot of these movies are getting thrown on streaming services within a month and a half, sometimes a month of them being in theaters. Like, this is still in the movie theaters. You know what I'm saying? So, So, let me throw some numbers at you real quick. Yeah. So, the estimated budget was $35 million, Mm -hmm. which is great to to direct your first film. Get $35 million. The opening weekend, it got Mm 23.2, and it grossed 65.3, and worldwide, it grossed 85.1. So I mean, it made his money. Of, yeah, you know what I mean? Doubled. Yeah. So, you know I mean, that's that's one thing you got to, you know what I'm saying, be happy about for sure is that domestically it doubled. Worldwide, it made even more. Um, Damn, you know where they filmed this shit at mostly? Canada. Ireland. Wow, really? Yes. That's Like crazy. four or five different locations in Ireland. So yep. now the Olaf and Elsa shit makes sense now. To have yep. the two, to have the two uh, European hikers, that makes sense why that was added in there. Because I'm like, why the fuck would European hikers be in Tennessee? But um, <clears throat> I will say this though: the fact that this may be one of those like trend things where people try to ride that wave, especially like new directors or you know what I'm saying, anybody that's trying to get like that first movie out. I think that's going to make for great. Um, I think it's going to make for a, a great moment the same way like you brought up earlier how Sharknado and all those kind of movies did and I could definitely see somebody having a movie like this coming to sci-fi real soon yeah yeah oh man yo you know, listen like to this like a real bad CGI bear for sure yeah you're definitely right about that but I didn't know this so check this out so <clears throat> Ray Liotta's final completed film role before his death was on May 26, 2022. It says Liotta died <clears throat> a week after he came to re-record his lines in pre-production. Elizabeth Banks said that Liotta praised the um, praised the look of the bear once he got to see, uh, get a good look at it. Mm-hmm. So like he died like yeah like right there like that's crazy. And I will say this for that to be his final role was perfect because that was like that was right in his lane that was dead on his lane like for Ray Liotta to be able to to be as funny as he was in the role that he's usually doing I I thought that was that was a great um that was great casting 
to have him play that role. Sid, like Sid White, definitely looks like Ray Liotta for sure. Yeah, no That's matter. Crazy. Like if if you tell me anything about this dude, you tell me his look, and then say Ray Liotta, I'm like that is a perfect match. Uh, Ray Liotta is definitely the DNA of that character. Um, so hopefully you guys liked it too. But um, we're going to go ahead and tell you what we got coming up next in the coming soon. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. All right, man. So y'all already know what's going on, man. Listen here. This is the final episode. The last of the story Snowfall saga. Um man it's it's been a wild ride but i will say that they definitely went out with a bang they definitely went out with a bang so far um you know this next episode is going to to me possibly solidify them in greatest television shows of all time i'm sad and excited at the same time yeah. Uh, to see this final episode and to do this final episode. This is something that we've done season four, season five, and season six of this show. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, man, it, it's exciting to see it come to an end, but it's also sad at the same time. So I just got mixed emotions about it, but I'm definitely excited to uh, to get into this episode because I think this is going to be great. Yeah, man. Um, last Where we last left off at with you know what I'm saying, Sissy Saint possibly being, and I, I put this on the Viewers Anonymous tweet, uh, that she might be, you know what I'm saying, the, the biggest uh, villain in black television history. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because of that one move, she may be the least liked black TV character of all time. You know what I'm saying? 30, 30 plus mil, bro. And it just all down the drain off of two gunshots. It's crazy. So, um, man, <clears throat> excuse me. Make sure y'all stay tuned in, man. Next episode, we getting into it. Um, the final season. I'm sorry, the final episode of Snowfall Forever. Um, it's gonna be just like as I said, man. It's gonna be an emotional ride. It's gonna be a sad moment. It's gonna be an exciting moment. Um. Can't wait to watch it. And, you know, if you are a fan of Snowfall or if you enjoyed Cocaine Bear or if you, too, just, you know, thought that Isaiah Whitlock yelling on the top of the roof of a gazebo was funny, hit us up. Let us know. You can follow us on all social medias on Instagram and Twitter at View and Nine Pod. You can also follow us on Facebook at VA Pod Watch Group. And just like I mentioned earlier, um, about the viewers anonymous tweet, you can also check us out and join the community on Twitter at the viewers anonymous. Make sure you find the um, community. If not, hit one of us up on Twitter or hit us up um, individually on Twitter. I'm sorry, hit one of us up on Twitter or hit us up on the viewers anonymous Twitter um, to get uh, added to the community. It would, um, you know. It's, it's going to be fun to be able to talk about these things, have these conversations and whatnot. So, um, yeah, if you'd like to follow me, hit me up on Twitter at Schools Bronson. I have a link tree in my bio, and you can follow me everywhere else there. And y'all can find me at uh, s.foster8 on Instagram and on Twitter at 28 Minutes or Less Pod. That's just on Instagram. Follow the podcast, 28 Minutes or Less. Last episode is 121 on Jamaica Thompson. So I will have something new coming out very soon, so be on the lookout for it. That's all I got. For sure, man. And listen, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. It's always greatly appreciated. We couldn't do this without you. Um, and until the next episode, like they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap. Cut.